Thinking about changing locations and shit. Man, get into this motherfucking bag. Stand out the way, I mean. Alright, we're rolling? Yeah, this is crazy. What's up, guys? My name is Russell Orhi. Uh, welcome to the Better Take podcast. This is episode number one, uh, kind of like a pilot episode. It's so weird that we are finally here. Um, I'm sure most of you guys that are listening right now, you come from like my social media pages, which is going to be like Russ Wool, um, the Get Better Today brand and all that kind of stuff. So welcome. Um, but I love podcasts. Like everyone that like has been around me knows that I do not listen to music whatsoever. Like whenever I'm just kind of like out and about or driving, um, Houston is a big ass city. I'm from Houston. So whenever I'm driving or doing anything, I'm sitting at the crib, no music is playing. It's always podcasts. Like I'm either listening to clips of Joe Rogan, I'm listening to uh, The Brilliant Idiots, or um, any other podcast I might stumble upon. Even like when I watch like Undisputed, I actually don't tune in to the um, episode as it's airing on TV. I actually just catch it on YouTube and catch it like on the podcast forum. Um, so I'm able to kind of tune in and listen to when I want to. But um, I just wanted to use this episode to kind of introduce you guys to what my interests are and also give you guys kind of like a behind the scenes of what it takes to kind of build um, a brand, which is the GBT brand and the Corrupted Strength and just have these conversations that I typically don't have on YouTube or on social media because it's not really like the format to do so. I feel like when you're on a podcast, you have the opportunity to explain things in depth, talk about things at length and kind of get your point across without it it being too misconstrued. I know people are probably going to take clips here and there, but yeah, like I said, I'm super excited to kind of dive into this. And I was thinking to make like originally when Izzy, so Izzy's the guy that kind of set everything up. Um, Izzy brought this to Izzy. Did you, Izzy's off camera, but didn't you like ask me, you're like, or no, no, I posted on my IG story, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Izzy, yeah, Izzy hit me. He's like, yo, why don't you run the GBT podcast? And I was like, all right, cool. Um, so that's something that we decided to do. And he kind of took the reins on that and created this whole thing and made it possible to happen. So, um, yeah. So what I'm um, disclaimer, I know I'm a powerlifter, a world, <clears throat> a world champion powerlifter at that. Um, and I know I'm a fitness like influencer, whatever you want to call it, social media entrepreneur. Um, this podcast is not going to be about that. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be sitting here every single week talking about what's going on in the fitness industry, um, talking about the different things that are happening in the Palatine community. Um, while they are part of my life, while they are things that obviously me and the team talk about from time to time, it's not going to be the focus of this podcast whatsoever. I am an individual that has a lot of different interests outside of powerlifting. Um, for context, for the powerlifters and people in the fitness industry that are listening to this, I do not talk about fitness shit or powerlifting shit ever, like really. The only time I talk about it is like when I'm around my other fitness friends and, and even at that, it's very short because I'm not really interested in that. I don't really care about the people in it in that, like in a, in a weird way, like I just like to have my escape from it because I'm in it so much, if that makes sense. Like when I work out in the gym, I'm around those people. Um, but even when I'm talking to those people, I never talk to them about fitness. I never talk to them about what they're particularly doing in their training program or like all the drama that's happening. I want to know like the individuals behind that. Like I want to know about their interests and what they think about the different things that are happening in the world, uh, how their minds are built and all that kind of stuff. I don't really, I could give two fucks less about like, (laughs) you know, if you're taking creatine every single fucking day or like which pre-workout do you like the most or which movement is more optimal for quad growth. Like I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. So Sorry to break the hearts of the people that are coming in here listening, that are hoping to listen to me talk about fitness and shit, but that's just not what this podcast is going to be. Um, Yeah, so this is pilot episode number one. Uh, We actually don't have a set format for how this is going to go, so I'm going to break down kind of like how I think, right, and how I like to do things. So uh, I am a very free individual, okay? Okay. I thrive in environments that do not have structure. So what comes with that is I like to do things off the cuff. I like to just kind of like free flow, relax, talk, and do whatever it is that I have to do. Um, so this podcast, I told Izzy, I'm not going to come up with really any topics. 
just tell me what time to record. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to fucking record. And literally last night, I decided, you know, I'm going to do it alone um, just because I want to be able to get my, my point across and uh, let the people know what they're going to get themselves into. So um, when it comes down to the structure of doing this actual podcast, I definitely didn't want to be beholden to having guests. So what I mean when I say that is like, I didn't want to only record when I was having a guest. So like, let's say for the people that are watching, um, you guys know that I'm surrounded with people like Sholly, Christian, Max, Heidi, all those kind of people. I'm not going to be bringing them on my podcast or not, I'm, I'm not going to be dropping episodes only like when I'm talking to those people or only when I have a guest. Like I want to be on, I want to be able to come on this podcast by myself and talk. Like if I got some shit to get off my chest or there's something that really sparked my interest, like, like something that's happening in the world and I'm like, bro, I want to talk about this shit. That's when I want to jump on. Right. So, um, I think that it's really important that I establish that tone when we first start off, because I want you guys to relate more to like my, my way of thinking, whether you agree or not, it's like, yo, like what the fuck was Russell talking about when he was talking about this? Other thing? I, I completely disagree. So like, I want you guys to be like listening and then having like active dialect as or dialogue as you're listening, you're like listening and I'm maybe giving a take. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? Right. So, um, yeah, I want to be able to jump on here whenever I want to. Um, and then I'm going to mix that in with having some guests, right? So if I have someone like, I gave this example a lot. So shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Heidi. She doesn't even like, we don't even like talk to, talk to each other like that. But if I have someone on like a Heidi Summers, I want to be able to talk to her about shit that people don't talk to her about. Like, I don't want to jump on a podcast with Heidi and talk about, Hey, how did you grow your business above bunny? Like the fuck? Like, I don't want to do that shit. I want to ask her like real questions, um, of like, you know, questions i'm not gonna give i'm not gonna give my keys away because i already know like what i want to answer what i want to ask her but i don't want to sit there and 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 ask her generic questions that you would be able to answer if you watch your youtube channel like that's not what it's going to be about um i just want to have free-flowing conversation i want to curse i want to talk about things i want to talk about and just have fun with that you know so um one of the things and it's funny enough that i just gave that whole fucking rant about the fitness community <laughs> the first I guess like the first topic that kind of like piqued my interest whenever I was like driving here, it just came up, came up randomly. I'm on Twitter. And honestly, if you're not on Twitter, you, damn, is you on Twitter, right? Yeah, you're on Twitter. Okay, cool. Cause I was about to say this shit and I was like, fuck. And I just, I got followed you and everything. But um, yeah, if you're not on Twitter, that says a lot about you. That to me, that means you're not really tapped in like that. Cause I feel like Twitter is like the news, right? Instagram, let's break down the different social medias, right? Twitter is like the news and you get, you get like, you get the news as it's happening in real time, right? So like if something goes, if something happens, like the first place you're going to see it is on Twitter. Then you have, um, you have like Instagram. Instagram is more show about like showing off, like it's like more, yeah, just showing off. Like, like it's like a highlight reel, you know, where you show your best pictures, you show your best videos, you flex to the, you flex to the people that follow you and grew up with. Um, and then I would say TikTok is more so about showcasing your personality and like who you are as a, as an individual. Like, it's like, you know, I'm goofy as, I'm goofy as fuck, or like, I like to dance and be like, you know, cute and shit. Um, but going back to the topic, I was on Twitter, I was scrolling and, um, so I made a comment about the current state of the fitness industry and it made me think, and so much has changed about like, not just the fitness industry, but just like industries in general. I feel as though back when I started doing like content creation and all of that kind of stuff back in like 2017, it was more so geared to individuals that were actually doing stuff. Uh, and this, like, it's, it sounds so weird to say, but even back then, like the pro bodybuilders, like the real big bodybuilders used to look at us like, like y'all don't deserve the following that y'all have. Cause y'all not putting in the work that we are. And it's funny. Cause now, almost a decade in, I'm looking at these new guys coming in. I'm like, man, like <laughs> y'all shouldn't have the following that y'all do. Cause I feel like y'all not doing nothing. Right. So it's so interesting how so much has changed, but I think that just shows the growth of the industry because now the barrier of entry is a lot lower. So people are now coming in and being able to make their own small impact. And I had to change my way of thinking. Cause I'm like, that's the same way that these like big pro bodybuilders and like these, like these OG powerlifters used to look at us. Um, so I'm like myself and what 
what I would like to see in the fitness industry now is for maybe some of these um, content creators to start actually doing something, you know, like that sounds so crazy, but like how many times, like if you look at who you follow, right. And you might be following people for different reasons. Um, but me personally, I like to follow people that are constantly progressing, like whatever the fuck that is. Um, I think one of the things that made uh, Christian, let's just use Christian as an example. I think one of the things that made Christian uh, Guzman so successful is there was like a progression year to year. He would do a show every single year and he would kind of like compare himself from last year and there's a progression and he was like actually like competing and putting himself through or putting himself through the rigors of being a physique competitor. So you could relate to that natural progression of just like pushing your body physically. Um, you had someone like Max Tuning. Um, Max was ch <laughs> Max <laughs> Max was chasing three hundred like a three hundred and fifteen pound bench for like fucking like five years. But you tuned in because you watched him chase that. Um, he was a powerlifter, so you would watch him lift and like have his progressions tracked and all that kind of stuff. I think now with the with the uh, invention of TikTok. It's more, show, it's more so about like shock value, right? Like a lot of these influencers today, maybe good or bad, um, they don't really have to be doing nothing. Like a lot of these influencers now, it's more so about the shock value about what they're doing. And it's not like really a disrespect or anything like that. It's just stating the current culture or st the, the, current, the current state of culture. Like I'm trying to think of a successful... I feel okay. So, for example, I think that I think that Chris Bumstead is like a combination of someone that's like doing something, and he's very popular on social media. He's utilizing all social medias um, to grow himself, but he's like actually doing something in real life, right? Um, but there's 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 TikTokers that are just TikTokers, like TikTokers and um, people that maybe aren't doing as much in the fitness community, like in in itself, but they are more so just about posting like shock value content, which is kind of, it has done, it has done some interesting things, the current state of fitness, right? Or just like working out. I'll be in the gym and it doesn't really happen as much at Corrupted, to be honest with you. Um, thankfully, we, we've established a really, really good environment where that, that kind of stuff doesn't happen, but it's, it's a lot more popular now for people to come in and just like film. Like their, their, their goal isn't to work out. It's just to film. And it's so interesting to watch people come in. They might do a set or two to get the pump, take the picture. And like the rest of the workout is forsaken. Like they don't give a fuck about the workout. Um, the goal isn't necessarily to, 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 to get bigger or push yourself. It's just like, yo, I got my picture. I got my little TikTok and reels. I'm out. And it wasn't like that before. Like even the people that were just like social media influencers and they weren't high level competitors and power your bodybuilding. They still push themselves physically. They they still had the general love of fitness. Like it's like it's like oh I I just do it for the love of the game. You know, I feel like I feel like that component of it is is missing. And I feel like as more people have come into the game, like that's changed. Like it's just become more so about like, let's just get this content. Let's get more clicks. Let's get more views. Um, what's like the what's the thing that we can do the most that's like has the most shock value? So that's one of the things that I've noticed. Um, just being on the fitness topic, uh, that is just like, it, it, I try my best not to be a hater because I don't want to be that old head hating and saying like, well, back in my day, back in my day, you know, but it's very interesting. And I think that with me being in the posi uh, position that I am now, I see a lot of fitness creators and I, I see a lot of content creators where it's just like, we might be interested in like bringing someone on board, but it's like, what does this person like actually do? What do they offer? Like, what is something that they could take that's tangible and we could apply it to our brand and what we're trying to put out versus like just bringing on and trying to like scout for people that are just going for clicks and views because there's a big difference from my vantage point. Right. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because I didn't want to talk about fitness, but we ended up talking about fitness, but someone I was on IG live and uh someone was talking about talk about the whole um because this transcends fitness this is like real life stuff but the whole transgender thing <laughs> <laughs> is he looked at me and he goes Ugh. i don't want to touch up on that too much because i feel oh i feel like tackling that is a little bit dicey and i do not like 
I don't want to offend anybody. And I don't think I have the words or the current, I want to say, like, thought process to put down something on tape <laughs> that won't be as bad. I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to get fucking canceled, like, on my first episode. So I think I'm going to try to leave that alone as much as possible. But another thing that um, we could easily talk about is shameless plug. Um, we have a new drop coming. So for those of you guys that don't know, I am the owner of uh the gbt brand as you guys know it now i feel like by the time this episode comes out it's going to be the better brand for sure yeah i think how long do you think this episode is going to take to edit out probably like a couple days yeah 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 so for sure by the time that this episode comes out we are going to have already rebranded from the gbt brand which stands for the get better today brand to the better brand and I was just talking to Izzy before we started this podcast. Like, what do I think about how we're going about the current rebrand? And um, I'll, I'll give you guys like a beat behind the scenes um, look of like where that came from. So I went to Japan in December. Um, that was like my dream destination. Uh, I'm super into anime. I'm super into like just Japanese culture, Japanese food, um, all that kind of stuff. So I went to Japan to... Number one, get content, but also just kind of fulfill like a childhood dream. So that was amazing. Um, and while I was in Japan, I was just thinking about how I really want to come back home and rebrand, um, get better today. So that thought process came from me just realizing that, I don't know, maybe it was like this weird thing of me actually making it to Japan. And like, that was like one of the biggest childhood dreams that I've ever had. And I'm like, okay, like now you can let go of your childhood <laughs> and like, blossom into being a man right so as i've grown gbt right it started as merch for russ wool which i fucking hate saying my social media name out loud that's such a sick name bro russ wool <laughs> that's such a wild name to say out loud um so anyways i had merch for russ wool and it graduated into like get better today which was more so like what i would say at the end of my videos and it took on this whole movement. And um, I, we've grown so much. Like before, when I was selling tees, it, usually just, it used to literally just be t-shirts that you could work out in. And it was a way for me to connect the community that, that watches me. So it just it evolved so much. Like we went from t-shirts to hoodies to fanny packs to hats to shorts to now, we, now we're fucking selling jackets and like different special kinds of hoodies and corduroy hats and socks and other miscellaneous items. Like it's just gotten so big and, and it's like appealed to so many different people that I started getting around different social circles. Right. And I'm wearing the clothing and the clothing is dope. And I'd run into this like awkward, like problem in my head that whenever I would show people, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is my brand. Um, this is like the logo, like you guys that are listening, there's like this like orange and red comic book, Marvel looking logo that I used to run with. And I just felt as though that didn't properly represent where I was at in my life and represent what I wanted to represent in my life. It was more so from an individual that was living back in like 2015, 2016, um, where I was a younger person back then I had different views. Um, and this was just a way to mature the brand. And I was like, we need to find a way to mature it. So I just randomly one night just kind of thought, I'm like, I want to drop the GBT brand. And plus like people would like make fun of it by saying like L LGBT, or L LGBTQ, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, I want it to appeal to everyone. Like I want it to be able to kind of be represented proudly. Um, by myself to everyone. So like when I get to these rooms and I get to these different places, I want to be able to tell them like, yo, this is my brand. This is the better brand. And they're like, what does that shit mean? Right? Like what does better mean? And better still means like the same thing that it meant when it was the get better today brand. But this is a lot more, this can be stomached easier by like older individuals or people that are actually about that fashion shit and that fashion life. Like that was another thing too, because when I, when I talk about, wanting to appeal more to a crowd of people that I was kind of finding myself around. 
I like fashion. Like, I like to wear cool shit. Um, I like people that wear cool shit. I respect people that wear cool shit. And I wanted to have a brand that could be worn by people that like cool shit. Like, one of the biggest compliments that I feel like um, I could get. I mean, it's it's weird because whenever people say, oh, that shirt fucking looks dope. I more so get happy by saying, like, oh, this is my company. Because I didn't. I don't actually fucking design the shit. Like, I have a role in, like, saying, yo, I, I like that designer. Can we do this and that and third? But that honestly is Dion. Dion's the one that does everything. Um but I still wanted to have that respect of like, yo, fly, fly niggas will wear my shit. Like people that like clothes, they'll look at maybe an item or a piece of clothing that I've dropped and be like, oh yeah, I'll fuck with that. Like, I'll wear that for real. So that's why I, I thought that there, it's now time to move on from the get better today brand. Cause like what doesn't that, isn't that like a mouthful? Is he like the get better today brand? Like, it's just kind of like, it's just, yeah, it's a lot going on. It's just messy. And then when you shorten it to the better brand, like it cleans it up, but it opens it up in such a beautiful way. Like really think about it. If someone came to you and just said, yo, that's the better brand. Instantly to me personally, it's like, what the, like, what the fuck is the better brand? Like, what is that? Like, what's better, you know? But it opens it up not only to the mind, but it opens it up to the amount of things that we could create. Like, the goal that I have personally is to shit, man. I don't even know if I want to say it on camera. <laughs> Cause I just feel like people are going to take it and fucking like recreate it. But, um, I mean, fuck it, man. I want to, <laughs> Izzy looks up and is like, Oh shit. Um, basically I just want to be able to, to put the better brand on everything. Like I don't want to be limited to clothes. I don't want to be limited to, um, like garments. I want to be, I want to be limitless. And I think that's what the better brand is. Like I could, I could literally make a table and it's like, Oh, that's a better table. Or I can make a chair. That's a better chair. Or I can make candles. I can make whatever the fuck I want. Um, and just stamp the better brand on that. And it just becomes limitless. Whenever you ask what is, or what does being better mean to you? That answer is going to be different with everyone. Like I could ask Izzy, yo, um, what is, what does being better mean to you? He could say, oh, it means being a better father, um, a better partner, um, a better videographer. And you could ask me, what does being better mean to me? It means being a better, uh, better, a better son, a better powerlifter, um, a better business owner, like all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go around the room and ask people what does better mean, um, it's going to be something different. So what we want to do eventually is just get to a point where we're offering different products um, that help you become better or at least make you feel better, Right. Um, and as you keep saying better, there's like literally just like limitless results. And that's what I love about it. It's so beautiful because like better could be anything that you want it to be. Literally. It's like, to me, it's like one of the purest forms of art because it can mean and be interpreted by, it can, it, it can mean anything. It can be interpreted to, to be anything. Right. So you get a piece of paper and you do some shit on it. Right. Write some shit on it or just put a dot into it. It's like, what do you see here? And like, that's art and that's kind of what i want the better brand to be and that sounded super honestly i'm shit i wasn't freestyling but i was freestyling like the words but those are just like the overall general concept of what i want the better brand to be and that's why we've rebranded um that's why we rebranded the uh, the instagram the discord um and that's why things look the way they do now it looks a lot more like uniform looks a lot more um i guess like more branded in a sense of like we are we obviously have like a very clear direction of where we're going. And um, yeah, there's, that's just typically like, that's basically where we're going at. And it's funny because like I had that meeting with the team at the beginning of the year when I got back from Japan and it was super, it was super dope. I was in my bag. I was in my bag for that meeting because <laughs> I created like a, I created like a slideshow and shit and like mood boards, um, kind of addressing the different departments of, uh, at the warehouse and all that kind of stuff. And like, everyone was like super motivated. And I think that the resounding effects from that meeting have kind of bled into like where we're currently at now. I think it's like we're in month number four. So at the, at the four month mark, we've just gotten to a point now where I think that we are on a healthy trend of where we want to be. Obviously things aren't perfect and it never is when you run a business, but it's uh super cool to kind of watch it. So like, once again, for those of you guys that are watching, I hope you guys kind of like, or what, uh, for the people that are listening, Hope you guys kind of like take that in and just see that we're going in a different direction with the better brand. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, I just wanted to run run down that very quickly. It's funny. Another thing that literally just came into my head because I was thinking about <clears throat> the playoffs. We have we have an interesting um, dynamic with uh, Dylan Brooks, right? And I'm gonna refer back to uh, uh, let's just say it's sports. All right. For the women that are watching this podcast, for the two of you guys, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to explain this situation so like you guys kind of understand what's going on. There is a player, right? His name is Dylan Brooks. He's a, mar- he, he, he's a marginal player. He's okay. And he started, I guess, calling out one of the greatest players of all time, LeBron James, right? Pretty much calling him out in the media and saying like, oh, like, you know, he's he's not all that and I'm not scared of him, da da da, this and the third. And he ended up basically not really backing it up with his play. And I wanted to talk about how number one, trash talk only hits when you have the ability to back it up. Whenever you cannot back up your trash talk, you are just someone that's talking and your shelf life is going to dissipate very, very quickly. I'm telling you right now, trash talk only, trash talk is only effective when you can back it up. And when you back it up, that allows you to keep talking trash and it, it makes people take you seriously. Whenever you get into this, like this, this air of like, anything you say is cap or you're just talking to talk. I'm telling you, people are going to tune you out and you're going to be viewed at it. There's a fine line of being viewed at as a clown or a villain or what most people like to say is heel, right? A heel is someone that, which is like a wrestling term. A heel is someone that kind of takes on, it's like the kind of like the instigator takes on all the hate. It's almost like, I think a, a synonym, syn- syn- you know, it's hard for me to say cinnamon, syn- syn- synonym, 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 there we go. <laughs> a cinnamon. <laughs> I said cinnamon. Fuck it. I'm going to say cinnamon, cinnamon today. Um, a word that represents that word is obviously villain, right? So people don't realize when you can't back up your trash talk, you're going to get looked at as a clown. So he started playing the victim role and saying like, oh, the media is making me out to be something that I'm not. And it's like, bro, unfortunately, like... I know things are not going his way, but unfortunately when you wear that hat as like the heel or the villain, you can't, it, it's hard. You can't, you can't really take that shit off, especially when you're not performing. You got to answer those questions. You got to, you got to answer that noise. And I bring this up because, um, I am in the powerlifting community and there's a lot of people that awkwardly try to take on that villainous role, right? Like I'm not going to say any names, but it's just like, I've seen people like, they try to be the villain to get more clicks. They try to be like the bad person to get more views and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, it gets played out very quickly. Like the second that you don't live up to expectations, it's almost like, okay, this guy is just annoying, right? He's just talking. Like, what does his words actually mean? So you have to be very careful. I think people have to realize, I'm not saying being a villain or being a heel is a bad thing. What I'm saying is like, when you take on that role and you start pushing that narrative, you got to be able to back it up because if the person you're talking to starts beating your ass, that shit is not going to hit the same because then all your words become cap and it becomes something that you just cannot keep up with at all. Like it's really, really tough. And I think that what's happening with the whole Dylan Brooks situation is that he's trying to swing for the fences and he missed and now he's getting killed by the media and he can't take it. And the worst thing to do is to start playing that victim role. Like what, what I think that should have happened is that he should have just ate that shit. Answer the questions after be like, yo, I'm sorry. Um, not, 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 not that I'm sorry, but it's like, yo, I didn't, I didn't live up to the expectations that I thought I would. It is what it is. Um, I'm going to keep it pushing, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's just like another thing that was on my mind. The whole Dylan Brooks um, situation with LeBron just because LeBron is such a great player and Dylan Brooks is such a – marginally good player it was interesting to see like him really try to call him out and get him out of pocket and uh like i said like whenever you play that role it just doesn't work out if you cannot back it up right so like like i said just make sure you back it up whenever you start talking that shit 
because when you don't, that shit looks horrible. Um, yeah, I've damn. How long have I been talking? Twenty minutes. This shit's not that bad, bro. Yeah, this shit's not that bad. What I was scared about, honestly, was jumping on here and then like running out of, not even like running out of topics, but like just talking straight for like a super duper long time. Like I'm someone that likes to rift and I'm someone that likes to talk. Um, but my concern was like jumping on a whole podcast by myself, not being able to like have any questions or, or, or just like any type of thing to talk about. Right. Because I think like the biggest thing with these podcasts is to provide content and takes for, um, people to listen to. And whenever like you get into that realm of like, you're just talking about yourself, you're literally talking to yourself. Like there's no like bouncing back in like conversations. Um, but funny enough, something just popped into my head. And also, too, something that you guys are going to start noticing with this is that I think over the course, I think over the course of me, like, doing, like, uh, having, like, the GBT brand, having a gym, um, doing my own, like, programming when it comes to, like, selling programs and all that type of shit, I think I've developed, like, ADHD or ADD. Like, my focus always, like, bounces off the walls, right? Like, it just goes all over the place. But what I wanted to talk about was... um. I don't know if you guys have friends. Maybe it's something that happens when you get older and more, maybe like you got more, like you have a lot more going on, but it is so hard for me and my friends to link. Like as I've, I'm getting close to 30 now, I'm like 28. You have to, we have to like schedule like meetings for us to, to like meet up. Like we get to a point where it's just like, all right, so let's, let's jump into my group chat, right? It's me and three other friends one of my friends which is my boy josh he lives out in miami right so that he's already out my other two friends live here in houston like live here in houston right and it's always like oh yo can you like yo let's pull up and have a link or let's link on wednesday tuesday no wednesday morning happens right Yo, I got a meeting that just came up i'm sorry i can't come through da, da, da. it's like bro what the like what the fuck right but it happens to me too because there's something that comes up and it's like more important than Link itself. And I think that happens a lot more when you get older and you get into your own ways because sometimes like it almost feels more comfortable being alone in a sense because it's just like you're older now and you don't have like that innate desire to be around people. You value your personal space a lot more and then you just have a lot more shit going on. So another example, we were about to go to Miami, literally. Like the, the group was going to fly out to Miami get a message the day before mind you we was going to go watch izzy out of zanya fight like this is ufc shit we bought our tickets the tickets weren't like the cheapest flight one of the boys hit the chat said yo i can't come <laughs> i'm sitting there i'm like no fucking way we have been looking forward to this trip for the past mind you we booked the trip in like a week we have been looking forward to this trip for a whole week and the day before you want to start talking about i can't pull up like i really want people to like kind of like oh shit what's up duhan i want people to kind of like think about maybe the older people like is it hard for y'all to link like i just feel like after i hit a certain age like no i don't stay at my my boy's cribs the way i used to earlier on back in the day when it first started like whenever we were chilling back at like when i was like 21 or something like that we the same friend group we all used to hang out i want to say probably from like 8 p.m to like 2 in the morning there's no way in fuck i'm doing that today at all like at all like there, there's just no way because i'm so busy to this point now like i'm doing stuff like this or you know maybe i'm talking back and forth with like manufacturers that wake up like a lot later in the day it's just so much harder and then also too like bro i'm just some days i'm just trying to be at the crib by myself maybe watch a game maybe just relax and just be uh, just be by myself and i think a lot of that has happened more as i've gotten older and maybe i'm telling this story to to hope that maybe it's not something that i'm experiencing by myself like maybe someone out there that's listening to it's like yeah bro like as i've gotten older it's impossible for me and my friends to link but i think as you start doing shit and um you start having different responsibilities it's a lot harder to link like it's really impossible um 
so yeah it was just something because like i'm actually downtown and they're downtown and like it's like oh let's link like it's a perfect opportunity to link and i'm the odd friend out because i'm like oh fuck i got something to do I'm, i literally have something to do that's the only reason why i'm downtown so i just thought about that very briefly i'm like fuck man i cannot link with them but another thing that i saw before i jumped on everything is gonna be random by the way uh it's just gonna be like random ass topics one thing that i saw and you know what this is gonna be like two topics in one someone asked me (laughs) i'm sorry i'm laughing now because this is about to be a funny conversation and this is this conversation is going to blend into more of i i don't want to jump on this podcast and not talk about shit even though i didn't touch on the earlier uh, subject i want to be able to talk about subjects that i actually feel comfortable talking about or or just like be able to talk about subjects that um most people feel uncomfortable talking about right and that is one of those topics is being horny (laughs) like (laughs) i'm laughing now because people assume Okay, let me give more backstory to this because this is this is a lot more, uh, this is a lot more, this is longer than just like something being blurred out. Okay, on social media, on my Twitter, oh no, uh, not so much on Twitter. On Instagram, I do this thing where I put H asterisk asterisk asterisk, and I think another asterisk, and then Y, right? And everyone's like bro are you horny right like are you being horny like that is is like does that stand for being horny and it's funny because i started off doing that and it actually stood for happy (laughs) it was almost like a social experiment so like i would do stuff like this right let's say like i take a selfie i'm like oh i'm so h asterisk 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 y today right people automatically assume i'm talking about being horny I'm like, no, I'm, I'm actually saying happy. What I was doing, social experiment-wise, was seeing like how many people's minds are in the gutter. And a lot of people are like, oh, bro, like you're always horny, da-da-da, this and third. I'm like, I've never once said I was horny. Like All I said, I was H, asterisk, 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 Y. Right? So I think that was like a funny topic because a lot of people don't be horny. And I, okay, I know, like, I wasn't talking about being horny, but it started coming up. Um, I started, like, you know, playing around, and, like, people were like, oh, man, like, you're always horny, you're always horny, you're always, you're always horny. And then it kind of bled into the conversation of, like, damn, like, how horny do motherfuckers be all day? Like, not just me, but, like, some people actually have, like, no sex drive. <laughs> Is he walking back? He's like, bro, where did this conversation go? <laughs> like this is what happens when you leave me by myself but okay look let's talk about this i don't know where you at right now you probably listen to this maybe you in bed maybe maybe you driving riding around or maybe like i don't know you're working out ask yourself this question on a scale of one to ten how horny are you right now and i'm gonna i'm gonna let that sit i want you guys to really think about that how horny are you right now think about it give your answer okay we got the answer i'll i'll go first i'm at a moderate i'm at a moderate at a scale of one to ten i'd say i'm probably i'm not gonna lie to y'all i'm here with izzy and duhan like two dudes so like i'm not horny whatsoever that would be pretty that actually be pretty insane to be horny right now but when you talk to like i'm not encouraging y'all to talk to your friends about being horny actually maybe i am ask your friends like okay hold on are would izzy and duhan would y'all say that y'all are horny people yeah yeah they have like a high sex drive they're so they're saying yeah they do um but it's crazy because like there's a lot of people that don't have a high sex drive like there's a lot of people when you talk to certain couples and i love doing this because i like i like talking to couples and i like talking to people to kind of get their mindset behind things there's couples that they have sex maybe a couple times a month. Like literally, there's there's some couples that only have sex a couple times a month. And to me, that I mean shit, bro. 
a couple times a month is unacceptable. <laughs> like, bro. Bro, really think, bro. Bro. I know I'm trying to be fair, but, bro, sex three times. Because there's probably people that listen to this. They're like, yeah, I mean, bro, I mean, you know, sex isn't on my mind all the time like that. But bro, you only three times a month. Maybe if you're single and you just can't get no cheeks like that. Or maybe you're single and you can't get no, you know, meat like that to the women that are listening. You know, actually, let's take that back. For the people that are in relationships and only have sex like three times a month or like, you know, less than a handful of times a month, it's like, God damn, like. Like, I don't know. That's just just so crazy. But it's just so interesting to me how different people are. And, like, <laughs> that's the type of shit. If I have a guest, like, that's going to be, like, question number one that I'm asking. It's like, yo, like, how horny are you? <laughs> like, how horny are you right now? Um, yeah, man. I don't even, honestly, I don't even know why I just jumped to that, to that whole topic. But I think what's, what's crazy is that. Like I said, it's funny how, like, I could post something on social media, and it's crazy how, like, powerful, like, the phone is and, like, how powerful, like, a perception is. Because I do a lot of funny things on my Instagram story that aren't meant to really be taken seriously. Like, okay, so the horny thing, the happy thing, whatever, that was one thing. Then I started posting about how I was crying. I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> Okay, so back, let's, let's give a backstory to that as well. So last year, or maybe two years ago, um, I had like a, um, I wouldn't call it, I don't want to say it was a depressive episode, but I had like, I had like a rut, just, just ruts of my life, like for the last year and a half or so, or, or like maybe a um, year and a half or so ago. And then I started seeking therapy. So I started going to therapy and started figuring things out, getting a lot more touch with my emotions, figuring out who I was as an individual, um, and maybe healing some trauma that I had in my childhood and all that kind of stuff. It did wonders, actually. Like, I'm a lot more, I'm a lot more patient and understanding um, when it comes to certain things. I'm also patient with myself. Um, I used to actually kind of deal with social anxiety, which is weird because I'm very, if you meet me, I feel like I'm, a, I'm somewhat of a social person. You know, maybe I have like a lot of charisma, but <laughs> it's like a compliment to myself. But as I started taking, as I started going to therapy, I started getting more in tune with my emotions. Um, and when I realized that, and I realized that I was like actually like in a rut, I was like, damn, like, let me start not making fun, but let me start, yeah, let me start making fun of like, of myself right so it's more so like i started getting in touch with my emotions let me start showing people in my own funny weird twisted way that i'm more in touch with my emotions so i'd be like oh what's up guys i just finished crying about to get this workout in or like what's up guys just got up uh just finished crying about to jump into this meeting because i started crying like honestly like growing up i didn't I, I could count on my hands how many times i cried but now like as an adult as i've gotten older i don't know what it is bro i'd be in movies like movies, I'll, I'll always be like, how the fuck are you crying in a movie, right? But like, I'll be in movies crying, and then, this is all post-therapy, I'll be in movies, start crying, like, I'm like, damn, like, am I real life crying? And then I'll be talking to people, and like, they'll be telling me their life story, and just like, why they started watching me, and I just start crying. One time, one time I cried, like, I started bawling at the gym. This one dude, <laughs> funny story, this one dude came up to me. And, like, I was having, like, a rough day. It was, like, a rough mental day. Like, it was just rough. I just wasn't feeling good about what I was doing. I wasn't feeling good about anything. And literally, like, an angel sent from God, he literally pulled up to the gym. I walked in, and he beelined straight to me. He started giving me his life story. And I literally just <gasps> started crying. Do you want, were you there or no? Like, when I was bawling, someone was, like, talking to me. It was like late at night. It was late. Actually, you probably weren't there. I think it was just Gia. Yeah, I was crying. Yeah. And I met someone. And so so going back to the store, I met someone and I just started like boo-hoo crying. I'm talking about like, it wasn't no like thug shit. It wasn't like a, a tear. It was like, <laughs> like crying like that. And I was like, man, what the fuck is going on with me? Because I just cried in front of everybody. Mind you, I, I don't like, I don't cry. So 
it just got to a point now where like I, I was just crying so i just like start joking that oh like guys i'm crying and like i'm about to start working out but i'll be saying it in a way where like i don't I, there's no way people are taking me serious i was wrong <laughs> like people people started dming me and being like yo man just wanted to say like you know, I don't know what you're going through, but like, da da da, this is what you mean to me. I'm like, oh fuck, like people actually really think I'm crying. So it's just so crazy how like you could you could put something on social media and people perceive like it to be a certain type of way when it's really not. And like I said, IG and shit like that, you create this persona and you create like what you want people to see, and it could be a completely different story. And I'm, I'm like, I know I'm being funny, but it's just so crazy how. People could assume based off what they see on social media and like what they see other people say that you are a certain type of way when you're actually not like recently I had, um, I had a situation where, uh, I had a situation where someone basically said like, Oh, like, you know, Russ is a certain type of way. And, um, you know, I'm meeting people in person and stuff like that. And this girl goes to me, she's like, wow, like you're nothing, you're nothing, um, you're, you're not what I thought you were going to be. And I was like, what'd you, what'd you think I was going to be? Like, you, you don't, you know, you don't know who I am. And she was like, oh, I just thought you'd be like, I thought you'd be standoffish. I thought you'd be arrogant. I thought you'd be cocky. I thought you'd be rude. And like, you know, just not talk to me. I'm like, bro, that's, I'm like the exact opposite. Like, that's not what I do. Like, I don't do that at all, actually. But she got that from social media because of what she's seen and what she's heard. And, um, it's just like, damn. We've just gotten to a point now where like you're what what you portray on social media and what you put on social media is almost like your 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 cultural currency in a sense. It's just like I could pull up somewhere and people not give a fuck. Like people don't know who I am, whatever. The second I show them my social media following. And this has happened before too, which is like funny. They completely treat me, I mean, they treat me completely different. So let's say that I'm going, <laughs> let's say, let, 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 I'm not trying to like put anyone on the spot, but let's say I'm going to McDonald's. I pull up to McDonald's, they treat me a certain type of way. Um, and then maybe I get in a conversation with one of the workers or a manager there or something like that. I'm like, oh yeah, like, hey, you should follow me on Instagram. And then they see my Instagram and they see my social media. And it's like, whoa, whoa, shit. Man, like, I didn't know you were da-da-da. Let me treat you differently now all of a sudden. It's just like, damn, social media controls a lot. And it, like, it really changes how people think of you in their head. And I'm like, bro, I didn't change. Like, all, the, all that you saw was just the number that was on my social media. Like, I'm still the same person that interacted with you, like, two seconds ago before you looked at my phone. Kind of see that. So, yeah. Um, damn. How long have I been talking? Has it been, like, 45 minutes? ish 45 48 damn this shit kind of easy bro a little bit huh keep going I'm, my knees hurt bro yeah i'm no, i'm sitting but like god damn man shit like i i keep telling people so i work with a very my the people that i work with are very very young or they're younger than me for sure everyone's like around the age of like 20 to 20 i think like g is like 26 everyone's like 20 to 24 right young knees intestines working just fine not lactose intolerant like me and i keep telling them like man y'all enjoy y'all youth i'm like the old head now i'm like man shit i remember when i could just like pull up to the gym and not stretch i remember i could just like like just not fucking eat right and still be lean as shit i was like who was i talking to they just eat like shit but they look great fuck man because wheeze wheeze is like one of my creative sean he's one of our creative directors he he used to eat like shit now he's good though but yeah these young people bro like they could eat like people that are like around the age of like 20 to 24 they could eat whatever the fuck they want and still look phenomenal i've gotten to the age now if i eat like shit i'm going to look like shit like, I'm going to look like shit. If I eat McDonald's for a week straight or Chick-fil-A or whatever, like, I'm going to gain weight and you're going to see it. That was not the case 
when I was younger. Like, bro, like I could eat whatever the fuck I wanted and be fine. And, and, and shout out to the old people that are listening to this shit. <laughs> I say old. I'm really, I'm 28. But like to the older people that listen to this shit, like your body really, for real, does not operate the same way that it does when you're younger. And that sounds so simple. And it's like, well, no shit, Russ. But it's like, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand. And I think the threshold is like 25, 26. That's when shit just takes an aggressive left. Like your body just starts aching for no fucking reason. Like as I'm sitting here, ooh, shit. As I'm sitting here, my knees are creaking like they hurt bro like i could be sitting places now and like damn my fucking knees hurt not like in a like really really bad way but like if i squat the following day my knees are gonna be fucking cooked right it takes a lot more time to recover from workouts um the food is reflective on my body for when it wasn't like i really have to lock in to my nutrition in order to look good i'm just like fuck i'm at that fucking age and i'll be talking to the young people like I'm like, yeah, I remember when I was your age. Like, what the fuck? I sound like them gym old heads now. Or I sound like a like an uncle. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was young and I could do that. Yep, yep. Now I got to stretch about 15 minutes before I get it in. And I remember because I used to work out with this older guy. And he would work. He would like, he would have a workout before his workout. Because that's how long he needed to warm up in order to feel good to actually start lifting. And I'm damn near at that age now. I tell you, if I pull up to the gym and I don't warm up and I work out, I think I would die. Like, I think my body would actually collapse. And then I, <laughs> I'm like ranting about being older. I developed a lactose intolerance. Or I'm intolerant to lactose. I've developed, a, did I even say that shit the right the first time? I've developed an intolerance for lactose. So, Actually, you know what? There's a funny story that comes with that. Let's talk about let's talk about lactose intolerance. Cause fuck, man, that shit is not a fucking game. Like you might joke around with that and be like, "Oh yeah, like huh, I can't eat dairy or else I'm gonna fart." Like no, 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 it's a lot deeper than that. And yes, like we're we're literally about to talk about being lactose intolerant. Okay, so about two and a half years ago, maybe two years ago, I started. I mean, like, I eat, I, I love food. I'm, like, a foodie person. I love food. I like trying out different restaurants. I Like, my weakness is fucking ice cream. I love ice cream. Ben and Jerry's, milk and cookies, to be exact. <laughs> I said that shit like I was, like, wrapping a set. But I love Ben and Jerry's, milk and cookies. I love eating at, like, steak restaurants and, like, things that have dairy in it, obviously. So I started eating at these steak restaurants and, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a sicko because I would Uber Eats it or like go to go order for pickup and bring it back to the crib and I would eat it. And bro, when I tell you that I would wake up in the middle of the night with stomach pains, you wouldn't fucking believe it. Like the stomach pains I would have would make me question my fucking life. Like I would like, I'd be in bed just like rolling. I'm like, oh, I, like I know maybe there's people that are listening to this that don't see the video, but I'll be like, Oh, oh, fuck. Like, literally in bed, questioning, like, did I have food poisoning? Like, what? So then it literally felt as though, like, what's that movie? Is it Alien? Yeah, Alien, where, like, the shit comes out of their stomach or whatever. Like, Prometheus? Have you guys seen, if you guys haven't seen Prometheus, maybe do a quick Google search of that shit. But, like, it just feels like something is, like, fucking protruding from my stomach. And I'm like, fuck, man. So then I'll go... <laughs> I go to the restroom and I shit you not, no pun intended. I'd be on the toilet, like literally like, like nauseated, dizzy, room spinning, about to pass out type shit for about like, I'm not, I'm not joking when I say this, for about like two and a half to three hours, I'd be on the toilet. And this happened for, <laughs> it's funny because this happened for like, probably like two, three months straight. And you would think I would stop eating out, but I didn't. I would start thinking, I'm like, yeah, if this, if this happens for another month, I'm definitely going to the doctor. Like, I'm going to the doctor and I'm getting this shit checked out. Because this isn't right. Like, I shouldn't feel like this. Like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be on the toilet for three hours. <laughs> I shouldn't be feeling like I'm fucking giving birth to an alien, right? Like, I was convinced I knew what it felt like to give birth because my stomach hurt that much. I don't mean to offend the women, listener. <laughs> but that's, I'm just trying to paint a picture of how bad 
these fucking stomach aches were and how long I was spending on the toilet, right? So I, I started I started questioning things and like talking to people. I'm like, yo, like, have you ever felt like this before? And someone just like, I think it was Paul, which is assistant general manager at, at Corrupted Strength. He goes, how, like, are you lactose intolerant? I'm like, what? Me? No. I'm Nigerian. I'm I'm Nigerian. I'm me? Stomach problems with me? Nah, bro. I'm Nigerian. We don't know no lactose intolerance. Like, my stomach is tough, bro. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fucking lactose intolerant. But then it put a seed of doubt in my head. I'm like, damn, why would he say that? Am I really giving lactose intolerant right now? So, I was like, let me do a test. I love Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Love it. I love ice. That's like my, that's like my, my guilty pleasure. One of my favorite things to do is to get Ben and Jerry's ice cream, milk and cookies. Um, sit down, put on a podcast, listen and eat as I'm scrolling through social media, or like put on some, uh, put some shit on TV and just watch that and eat ice cream. I love that. I fucking love that. When I was a kid, I used to eat a ga- <laughs> This is so sick. I used to eat a gallon of ice cream like a day. I would watch America's Next Top Model. <laughs> I used to watch America's Next Top Model and just fucking eat ice cream. So, um, yeah, going with that, I was like, okay, let's do a test. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a case study here. I'm gonna eat this milk and cookies, Ben and Jerry's. I'm gonna body this shit, and I'm gonna evaluate how I feel as I'm eating and after I'm eating. So I ate the ice cream, and I had an upset stomach, and you know had to use the restroom. Like in the middle of the night. I'm like, all right. Ah, coincidence. You know, maybe just maybe I ate something else that caused that shit. So then I did it again. I was like, damn. Ah, ah, maybe a coincidence. Then I did it again. And I was like, fuck, man. It happened again. Like I I my stomach hurts and I have to use a restroom. And I was like, Fuck. I'm fucking lactose intolerant. <laughs> and you'd think this would stop because also like when you guys think about it, whenever you get these like whenever you get food from these steak restaurants, I don't think people realize like they they cook that shit in butter. Like I don't know if you've seen like on Hell's Kitchen or some shit like that when they're cooking these steaks, they'd be just like like whipping that shit in butter. And that's what would kill me. Like I would have these steaks and it would just fucking kill me. So you would think that would stop me from eating out like that. It didn't. I kept doing it, but I would I wouldn't do it as mu- as frequently as I used to, and I'd be very cognizant of what I was getting. I'm like, all right, I obviously can't do the steak. Might have to do the chicken. Um, can't do the dessert. Might have to take maybe a bite or two of the dessert. But then, which is recently, I think it was this year, or maybe towards the end of last year, someone put me on a lactate. No one told me that I could, because I had thought I'm like, well, I guess I can't eat dairy. I can't I can't eat cheese like that. Can't anything I can't eat anything that like has dairy in it because literally I shit you guys not, no pun intended once again. Whenever I eat dairy, it's almost like like that. I get dizzy. Um, I start seeing shit, my head get hot. <laughs> Some days I fall to my knees, so I'm like, why God? Like, fuck, man, my stomach hurts a lot. Um, but now I I found out about lactate. Lactate is an interesting thing, man, because lactate gives you the ability to fight those things in the moment. So it's tricky. You're still going to feel the after effects. You're still going to have to sit on the toilet, you know, and suffer. You good over there? (laughs) You're still going to have to suffer the effects of eating dairy, but you're not going to suffer the immediate effects of eating dairy. You're going to have to, you know, it's going to, the, the do the, um, the check's going to come due at the end of the night or something like that in the middle of the night. But in the moment, you can enjoy the food, which is great. Um, but yeah, man, that's, it, it, there's just so many things that come with getting older. And, and one of the more unfortunate ones is definitely the lactose intolerant. But I think, I think at some point, everyone becomes lactose intolerant. And then maybe reverts back. I don't fucking know. That's what I've read and what I've heard. Um, humans are actually not built to be eating fucking dairy. We're like one of the only mammals that eat dairy anyway. So yeah, I mean, it's, it sucks getting older. Um, I, I literally went from talking about being horny and sex to 
pivoting and talking about slight depression and crying all the way over to like shitting and lactose. That's actually insane. That's crazy. Would you guys say it's about like 50 minutes at this point now? Hour? For real? Damn. I feel like that's that's pretty solid for the first episode. I, I'm going to start wrapping it up then, right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. So, okay. Yeah, I'm going to start getting into like the closing aspect of this. Once again, guys, this was pilot episode, or this was the pilot episode, um, episode number one. Um, number one, I just wanted to show you guys like a format that I might be doing in the future. Um, it might change. We might just say, fuck this whole setup <laughs> and do something completely different. Um, there, there are people I want to start throwing on like guest wise. Um, but there's also topics that I want to talk about. So I think for the next episode, might have a guest, might have someone to kind of rift off of, but I'm going to kind of just kind of use it as a feeling out process. Right. I want this to be a journey and experience. I want people to kind of tune in here and like kind of like listen with like, oh, this is a safe place. Like we're about to live, we're about to listen to Russ talk about shit, or maybe he's going to have a guest on that you wouldn't normally hear them in their own world come into our world that we've created all together and listen to us rift and talk about bullshit, right? I want this to be like a podcast where we reflect on like what's happening currently in like culture, right? So yeah, I mean, it was, this was dope as fuck, to be honest with you. I'm really, really excited because podcasting and podcasts in general are my favorite forms of content. I love podcasts. I'm always listening to podcasts and I've always kind of wanted, wanted to run my own podcast. I think that I'm pretty good at conversation. And I think that, um, I think that it's a beautiful thing whenever you're kind of able to expand some of your thoughts and views in a long form way. But yeah, I mean, shit, that was pretty dope. Now it's time to start doing that corny shit you know, plugging all the shit. <laughs> so for those of you guys that are listening, if you guys aren't, if you guys aren't following the better take on Instagram, please do so. Um, that's going to be ways that we're going to be able to kind of like formulate topics. Um, talk to you guys about what you guys may want to see, who you may want to see. Um, make sure you're following the better brand on Instagram as well to keep up with the drops. Make sure you're following myself. Uh, maybe even follow Izzy and Duhan so you guys can like be bouncing off topics and conversations that you guys want for me to talk about in the future. But yeah, that's uh, episode number one. This is the better take. Hope you guys were able to take something from there. At some point, I'm gonna f I'm gonna have an intro. I'm gonna have an outro. That's gonna be dope. And then we're gonna have like segments. Like oh, like people ask you to talk about this. So um, yeah, we're gonna form the culture, and I'm I'm super excited and thankful for you guys to tune into this first episode. And with that, I'm out. Hope you guys have a great and safe Monday, Tuesday, fucking day. I don't know. Anyways, this is The Better Take. My name is Russell Ori. I'm out.